Hello, everyone. Thank you uh, for coming and celebrating uh, Reese's life, this remarkable young man um, who has meant so much to us. Um, I'm not as good as Lane. I'm not going to freestyle it. I had to I write my notes down here because this is going to be a little challenging. Uh, first off, if you knew Reese, you knew a good time. You also knew where the term big hearted came from. Reese would always put everyone else before himself, whether it was a helping hand or if he just needed to be cheered up. I believe his greatest gifts were his kindness, his compassion, his emotional intelligence to connect with people, and his sense of humor. Uh, following very close behind would be his sense of fashion. Uh, and judging from the outfits here today, um, honoring our sweet boy, it's remarkable to see uh, how many lives he's impacted in such a positive way in really such a short period of time. Reese had many, many nicknames. Reesey, Weesey, Reeso, Reeser, My Prince, RW, probably a fan favorite of R-Dub, but my personal favorite, Reese's Pieces. Don't get me wrong, it wasn't that people didn't know what to call him. He was just so special that everyone wanted to have their own name for him. And I am up here today to hopefully provide a glimmer of who Reese was and how truly remarkable he was as a person. I will try to do this with my own words, but more importantly, with his own. I never knew how talented Reese was as a writer. Recently, I was given the opportunity uh, to read some of his short stories, and all I could think about was how well written the stories were and the, and the personal insight that he had. It was, it was beyond his years. It was truly remarkable. As an example, Reese writes, to identify yourself, it is important to think, how do I view myself? And to view yourself, you must ask, what do I value in life? For me, it is a very cliche answer. I value family and friends. Family is with you for life, and you don't get to choose them, so you better get along with them. But friends are different. You get to choose your friends. And, while, and after a while, you start to become like your friends, so you better choose wisely. I rely on friendship and companionship more than anything. Seeing a smile on Steve or Gavin's face can make my whole day. Sometimes I wonder if they think the same, and that leads me to my next question. How do others view me? I try to stay positive all the time and spread the vibe, so I hope I am seen as such. A happy, go-lucky guy who doesn't worry about much, not age, not religion, or race. He absolutely crushed that. Friends and family, these are not mere words that this young man has written. There was action being taken in this world by our little Reese's Pieces. My wife recently received a text a few days ago from a friend of a woman whose son had a speech issue. She told the story how Reese was his first friend in middle school, always making people feel loved. It's also written about Reese's kindness and his acceptance it could shed a little light on people's day by simply speaking to them or just saying hello. Yet another story told last week and how, how another young man who by his own self-description said he didn't have many friends spoke up in a large crowd to acknowledge Reese and the time he would take to say hello each day they ran into each other. Imagine an adolescent boy in today's society with the pressure standing up just to say, hey, I love you, brother. That was the impact of our little pieces. He truly made people feel like they mattered. Simple, but critical acts of kindness and respect that he treated people with, he was truly, truly amazing. Another short, profound piece from Reese's English Journal examines a quote, you have to be taught to hate. About this, Reese writes, this quote speaks a lot of truth. In our school today, you see groups of people hating for no reason under the fact that their friends do. Those are Reese's words. I've seen it. But I believe Reese transcended the norm because he knew how important it was to be kind to others. And it truly just made him happy inside. As many of you know, uh, Reese struggled with a form of spina bifida. However, it would never let, he would never let it define who he was. 
It was though as he took it as a personal challenge to defeat it. His unwavering spirit as he went back to surgery time and time again. I can remember gathered around the house by the table talking about his next surgery and I would look at him and I would say, little pieces, I am so sorry you have to go to surgery again. And he would look up at me with those big doe, doe eyes and a, and a cockeyed smile and say, I'm not. I get all the ice cream I want and dad's going to buy me a new toy. <laughs> when he would come home after his surgeries, he always had his bright neon cast, his American flag leg braces, uh, and he always wanted to be part of the action with his brother and the cousins, mentioned many times before here. There was no stinking wheelchair, no crutches, nor casts, nor leg braces that were going to stop him from having a little bit of fun. I have never met anyone who single-handedly wanted or made other kids want to be in a wheelchair. <laughs> the tricks, the stunts, it's been spoken here. You know, the wheelies, the no-handed wheelies, downstairs, upstairs, which is still mind-boggling to me. And once he was tired, ready to get out of his wheelchair, there would be a line of kids waiting their turn to mimic his moves. Another writing from Reese. A word that motivates me, spina bifida. This is just one word that motivates me, and here is why. About one in 500,000 kids have spina bifida, and I am lucky enough to be one of the few. I used to pity myself, but now I am determined. I am de determined to prove the doctor who said I could never walk wrong to show that I can play basketball and that I am good at it. Speaking of basketball, I would be remiss uh, not to mention how proud he was to make the JV squad as a freshman. Uh, he was really serious about proving that doctor wrong. It's a... I know it wasn't always easy. There were some frustrations along the way. Spina bifida is not something that works around a basketball season. The ups and downs were there, and he wrote about them. A quote by Malcolm Forbes. Victory is sweetest when you've known defeat. About this, Reese writes, This truly speaks volumes and is very relatable. I like this quote because I have lost a lot. I have lost summer pickup games on the hot blacktop, friendly games with my brother that were never friendly. <laughs> Hell, I've even lost a toe. But all those times I've lost makes me more hungrier. I want to be better and win. So when you finally do win and you look back at all the pain and embarrassment of those losses that brought you, it makes victory even more meaningful. Because most times I win pickup games, but if in a snowball's chance in hell I beat my brother, I smile and I'll laugh in his face. <laughs> and every day when I look at my other toe, the little piggy that did come home, I get happy because any dub is a good dub. I'd like to leave you with uh, one last written piece from Reese. I was waiting in the waiting room, of course, and at this clinic was a play area. It had normal stuff. I would walk around, walk to my mom, walk over to the bath bathroom, almost effortlessly without thinking. I took it for granted, as most of us do, but something changed that day. Let me set the scene. An eight or nine-year-old me playing with toys. A kid in a wheelchair comes in the room with his mother and leaves him in the chair there and leaves and says, be good. I thought this was ironic. This child couldn't move or even talk. He just sat there. I noticed him come in, but I didn't think much of it as there were plenty more people like him in the waiting room. But this was the playroom where kids are supposed to play, smile, and have fun. I don't know what I was expecting him to do. Maybe the Charleston? But nothing. He just sat there. Something struck me that day. I would pity myself for something like not being able to play football when I could do something as magnificent as walking. Unlike this kid, I could do many things. I could move, talk. I could even do the Charleston if I knew how. I could feel my mother's lips on my forehead. I could feel the calluses on my father's hands. And even the sun baking my skin. All of these things we feel every day start to become minuscule to us. But if we were to give that kid what we have, he would be in awe. I'm telling you, this kid was something else. And Reese did give, by the way, of organ donation after he had passed. It's something that I believe that would truly, truly make him happy. 
On November 5th, 2002, Reese's Pieces came into this world and lit up our lives. <laughs> On April 22nd, 2019, Pieces of Reese went out to the world to save lives. You will forever be missed, sweet boy.